Hi folks, this is College Algebra Checkpoint Quiz 3.2. We're given a polynomial, and in part A we're asked to find p of 2 using the remainder theorem. Okay, so what's that mean to do? Well, the remainder theorem says if you have a polynomial function p, if you divide by the quantity x minus c, the remainder is p of c. So in this case, we're going to take our polynomial. We're going to divide it by x minus 2. Whatever the remainder is, is going to be p of 2. So the way we're going to do this di uh, division is using synthetic division. So we're going to start off with the 2 here. I'm going to write down the coefficients of p of x, making sure we're not missing any powers of x. So we start off with 3x cubed, 1x squared, negative 21x's, and then the constant term of negative 7. So step 1, we bring down the 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. 2 times 7 is 14. Negative 21 plus 14 is negative 7. 2 times negative 7, negative 14. Add negative 21. This is our remainder here. And according to the remainder theorem, P of 2 is negative 21. Now let's say you wanted to just check your answer. We can find P of 2 the old-fashioned way. Namely, substituting in x equals 2. Two cubed is eight. Eight times three is twenty-four. Plus four, minus forty-two, minus seven. Oops. So I get uh, twenty-four plus four is forty-eight. Excuse me, twenty-eight. Minus 49, and sure enough, that's negative 21. So that checks it for us. Okay, in part B, we're asked to show that C equals negative 1 third is a zero of P, and use this to find the remaining zeros of P. So remember, what's it mean to be a zero? It means that when I plug that number into the polynomial, I get a zero out. Now, of course, there's two ways to do this. I can plug this in and simplify and show you that I get out zero, or I can use synthetic division and get a remainder of zero. The advantage to synthetic division is once I know one zero, synthetic division shows me how I can factor the polynomial, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll take negative one-third, synthetically divide it into this polynomial. Bring down the three. Negative a third times three is negative one. I add that and get zero. Negative a third times zero is zero. I add, I get negative 21. The negative a third times negative 21 is a positive seven. Sure enough, when I add that, I get a remainder of zero. So I've shown, I've shown that negative one third is a zero of the polynomial, but I've done more than that. I've taken this polynomial P of X, 3x cubed plus x squared minus 21x minus 7, and I've actually factored it. The factor that corresponds to x equals negative one-third is the factor x plus one-third. Remember, these are always opposite. And I've factored, and this is my quotient polynomial. Now, the quotient polynomial is always going to be one degree less than what I started with because I've essentially divided out a power of x. So my p of x started with 3x cubed. That means this is going to start with 3x squared. So it's 3x squared plus 0x minus 21 or just 3x squared minus 21. So you can see how this is going to help us find the remaining zeros. From the x plus a third, 
equals zero, we get our x equals negative one-third, which we knew. But now we have this other quantity to set equal to zero as well. I can add 21 to both sides. Divide by three and extract square roots. And so showing it's a zero this way with synthetic division lets us break it down and find the other remaining zeros. So that'll do it for number one. All right, number two, we're turning the tables. Instead of factoring the polynomial to find the zeros, we're going to find the zeros and use them to factor the polynomial. And so the tool here we're going to be using is the factor theorem, which says that x equals c is a zero of the polynomial function p if and only if x minus c is a factor of the polynomial p of x. All right, so let's find the zeros. The way we find the zeros of a polynomial, we set the polynomial equal to zero. So we're setting x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals zero. This is a quadratic equation. We try to factor it nicely, it doesn't work. So we're going to resort to the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is the opposite of b, plus or minus, the square root of the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So let's find the b squared minus 4ac to make sure we even have real zeros to begin with. The b squared, the b is negative 2, minus 4 times 1 times negative 4, and so we get 4 plus 16, which is 20. So I get uh, the opposite of b, which would be 2, plus or minus the square root of 20, divided by 2. I can simplify the square root of 20. That's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So it's 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 over 2. And I can simplify this even more by factoring the 2 out. And so I get x equals 1 plus or minus square root 5. So the zeros of p are x equals 1 plus square root 5 x equals 1 minus square root 5. So if x equals 1 plus square root 5 is a 0, then I should be able to synthetically divide that in to my polynomial, which is what I'm going to do. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 plus square root of 5 is 1 plus square root of 5. Add that to negative 2, I get negative 1 plus square root of 5. Now I have to multiply 1 plus square root of 5 times negative 1 plus square root of 5. This is actually a difference of squares. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. I get plus square root 5 minus square root 5, those cancel out. Plus radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. This actually gives me 4, which is exactly what I want, because now I get a remainder of 0. So how has this helped me factor this polynomial? Well, the same as it did before on the previous problem. This is x minus this number. times this polynomial. I started off with the second degree polynomial. This is a first degree polynomial. x plus negative 1 plus radical 5. So there I've used the 0 to factor the polynomial. Now if you rewrite this, you can rewrite this as x minus 1 plus radical 5 
times x minus, factoring a negative 1 out, 1 minus radical 5. And so we have x minus each of its zeros. And this is a demonstration of a theorem we're going to learn in section 3.3 called the real factorization theorem. Okay, but we're going to leave that for section 3.3. That'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 3.2.